how it proves a ball. Because it doesn't work on a flat surface. That doesn't simple. prove a ball. It doesn't work on a flat surface, so you've got to take that That's one out of the equation. It's just an assertion. Yeah. All right, all prove right. that negative. Prove something doesn't happen. It's very difficult, my friend. Prove I don't have unicorns in my garage. That Can you do that? On Hold surface. on. Hold on. Let's level the same at you. Can you disprove my unicorn? Yes, it's a mythical creature. Uh, sorry, I've got one. Well, that would probably make sense. You lie about Disprove it, else. Alan. Conclusively oh. disprove my unicorn. Invite me down, do tea. I'll have a uh, No, Gary. you just do it from where you're standing. He's just asserted we can't do something on a flat plane. Prove I don't have a unicorn. You don't? Oh, well, that's just an assertion. I've got one, my friend. I am stroking it right now. I don't think you yep, should. Yeah, and I saw the unicorn through remote fan. viewing, so I Hold can on. I want him to try and, and disprove it. Unicorn that, that, that Hold on, Jimbo. Has. Let's see him disprove my unicorn. I mean, this is ridiculous. That's totally ridiculous. You dance around the questions because you don't. You've just asserted that you cannot do this on a flat plane. Mm hmm. So well, explain to me how I, it is possible. Prove on a flat I plane. cannot acquire a unicorn. I mean, I hope everyone, all the viewers out there are like, wow, he's resorted to using unicorns. Yeah, you're saying you can't do and something on a flat plane question, and saying that that is a proof of something. You're saying that's a proof that it's a sphere, not uh, working uh, on a we, flat plane. Are we, are we back on the 15 degrees an hour thing? Is that Either, one. Way? Either one, 15 degrees or two pole stars. If you've got any answers for that, that'd be great. Well, let me see. The whole idea of 15 degrees over a flat surface, I mean, if you... Have ever seen the face of a watch? You, you just kind of, kind of look at it like that, guy. This isn't all that complicated, you know. That's just the path of the sun and the moon, uh, circling around the North Pole center. So, I mean, if you can't figure that one out, man, I really don't yeah, know. What so in the North deal. Pole, Dima, but it works. Granted, but anywhere else in the rest of the world, it doesn't work. You do the angles. I think you're. But it great, 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 How do you know that? Did a video on it. <laughs> And how do you, how do you know, know how do you know what works from any other position? Yeah, uh, obviously, obviously move fifteen degrees anywhere else in the world. Is that what you're saying well, now? Well, obviously that will be well. Here, if it works at the North Pole, then you have to extrapolate uh, the distance of the sun uh, traveling away from the North Pole as the time as time goes by. So, if you can check it from the North Pole, that's that's the starting point. That's the genesis of where you're going to get your fifteen degrees an hour. So just and, and I and I did that or I was close and closest to the North Pole as I could get at that point. OK, so it, it's it's real. It just is. I already have it filmed. So that, that was 15 degrees an hour or so. Um, maybe maybe off one way or another due to dioptra, maybe spazzing out one way or not. But come on, guy, explain how it works on a ball, though. Because we're on well, the ball and there's a sun that's 93 million miles away. And and who determined that? Who who, many, who, many, measured, many who measured that? Many, many, many. many, many. Name people. four. Through name eons four. of, of okay. research. Uh, name, name three. Name three people who, who determined the... In 1653, Cassina in 1672, and then more recently through the advent of technology. It also made it more accurate. Advent of technology. Okay, yeah. and, and and they are and they. Right, and hang, they on, are, hang on, sorry, let me interrupt there. Who? What was the first name you gave? Boy Jens. Excellent. Right, Nathan, present my screen, please, if you would. I'd like to just challenge that um, that claim that you just made. I've been waiting okay. for, for someone to do that, and now we have our moment. Excellent. Right. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> oh. Hold on. Uh, oh, let, let, let Anthony do his little presentation, please. Don't interrupt. <laughs> so. As he correctly cited, Christian Hugens is the guy that quoted the distance to the sun. He was the first one that, quote, accurately did it. And I'm going to read from this citation. This is, um, well, it seems to be something to do with NASA, but it basically says, um, Christian Hugens' measurement to the sun says, the methods for finding the distance between the Earth and the sun that, that we inherited from the ancient Greeks never succeeded in giving an accurate result. wonder why that might be. Mm. But rather, 
lower limits to the distance. Astronomical books, astronomical history books tell us that the first measurement came from observations of the parallax of Mars in 1672 by Cassini and Richer. There was, however, a determination in 1659 by Christian Hugens that is both, quote, ingenious, so remember that word, and accurate, remember that word, ingenious and, and accurate, okay, and which deserves to be better known. And thankfully, our friend here has cited him and, and for which credit should be given. He's given the answer, which I've been hoping somebody would give for ages. However, it is described in Latin as Systema Saturnium, right, whatever that means, and in French in his Ouvre Complete, and also in a new book by Van Helden. In 1656, Hugens, living in Paris, had determined the shape of Saturn and its ring with the aid of a superior telescope and its own analytical skills. This is where it gets interesting. Nathan, are you paying attention? It says, yes. uh, Hugens wanted to give the sizes of these objects relative to the size of the Earth. We're all right at that bit. We know that they've got parallax scaled. Now watch what it says. He knew the relative distances, okay, of the planets, but... In order to convert his angular measurements into Earth diameters, obviously he would need to know what the Earth diameter was, he needed to find the distance from the Earth to the Sun in Earth diameters. This is where it gets fun. Hugens solved this problem with an assumption. Does anybody know what his assumption was? Was it radius? If he supposed that the planet Venus had the same size as Earth, he could calculate the distance in Earth diameters from the measurement of its angular size. So it's all based on a presupposition that Venus is the same size as Earth. <laughs> mic drop. Awesome. Mic drop. Absolutely it's awesome. Mic drop. That is oh. a mic drop. It is a mic drop. <laughs> so well, shout out to well. whoever gave you that information. Make sure you thank them from me personally because you just debunked your own argument. It was based on a presupposition about the, the size of Venus being the same size as Earth. Boom, boom. Hero. Ding, ding, ding. Knockout. So here you go. I've put um, uh, a little link there for D Marble. I know he's his good friend of Great Sapien. Maybe you should check out that video. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's. What is it? Another one of those videos where he used my name in the title or my face in the thumbnail, so no. he could uh, kind of grow his channel. Is that is that one of those? Let's, no, wait, Jimmy. Hang on, hang on. My point's just Jimmy. Been that was that was your response. No, no, my no. Point, yeah. Everyone's giving fair credit to your to your point, Anthony. It's absolutely awesome. I've just literally gone into the comment section and timestamped it for the re-up when it's rendered. Yeah. So you know. So I, I wanted to I wanted to respond to that because he brought up Christian Hugens, for which credit is given. Right, that is the answer. But I want to know why it's based on an assumption that you guys now consider to be true. Is it not a problem that it's based on the presupposition that um, Venus is the size of Earth? I would say so. And that goes into uh, the creation Hold of... Hold on, Travis. Travis, let's hear some okay. ball Earth responses. Great work there, Anthony. So anyway... Yeah, but what about the answer to the question? Is it not a problem that it's based on a presupposition that Venus is the same size as Earth? I think it's a problem for you. No, it's a problem for you, mate. Is it now? Yeah, you're the Jesus. one that cited it, and I'm asking Jimmy. you, is it a problem? And you're saying it's a problem for me. No, it's a problem for you, mate. And if you can't see it or refuse to accept it, then we have a problem here, Nathan. No, no, maybe he doesn't understand how it's a problem. Anthony, can you explain why this is a problem for him? Well, he's guessing the size of Venus to give him the distance, because if you know the si the actual... This is my point about the angular size. Angular size is a sum. Angle size is a measurement. And you will all laughed at me for it, but it's true. You need to know the actual size of something to get the distance. So he's assumed that Venus was the same size as Earth. Oh, but how, how do we get... Hold on. How do we get the size of Earth, though? That's based on... I don't know, Nathan. It I didn't say it, in the book. Is it, is it based on... Is it, is it R? It might be based on R, Nathan. It's it R. Be. So on Venus this, on this has occasion, got the Nathan, same R value as Earth, right? So we could include Venus in the housekeeping, then. <laughs> Well, yeah, we right. So, listen, we could include it, but what we can get um, back from the guy that cited it, Jimmy, is we can ask him to explain why that presupposition of Venus being the same size as Earth is not a problem for you guys, but we're pointing out it's a big problem. So you tell us why you accept it, and I'll tell you why we don't. So this guy, he picked a light out in the sky, and he said, that's the same size as Earth. Yeah. What is the diameter of, uh, of uh, Venus? Uh, sorry, we've just well, told you it's the same as Earth, has the same radius based on this guy 
using the begging the question fallacy that we ask about in the housekeeping, that would be R. Very similar, just, though, wouldn't you say? And just, hold on, you asked a question, I'm giving you the answer. Similar. Hold on, you? you've just asked a question, now I'm giving you the answer because you didn't listen to Anthony. So he's basically taken the presupposition of Earth-based radius, the thing we ask about in the housekeeping, and just decided that a light in the sky he sees is the same size as that presupposed sphere Earth radius value. So it's just this dude. He's just decided that's how big he's Venus out. is. He's hooked it out of his ass. Yes, he's precisely. Yeah. 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 Well, so I'll go and get Ranty a new camera and he can take some great observations. Sorry, let's not talk about Ranty and his camera. You seem to have danced over it very quickly. I like, danced over it. Like even the most stupid person in the audience would see how quickly you danced over it. Yes, he plucked it out of his ass, as you oh. phrase it. Which is that not a problem? A is that not a problem? <laughs> oh, it's your fiction corroborated sorry, by more fiction. Sorry, how do you get a 15 degrees of turn an hour when you're plucking values for how far these things are away out of people's asses? No, you can you can go and observe that yourself, Anthony. Sorry, what? The presupposition of no, Venus being no, the same size of Earth. Sorry, I'm just getting just getting now, clarity. Right what can we observe ourselves? The presupposition that Venus is the same size as us. Now, you can go and observe right now the sun moving at 15 degrees every hour and then go and yeah. ask your friend in America, D. Marble. You, you, yeah, so the problem with that is... The problem uh, with that is you've got a presupposition Australia. that it's 93 million miles away and that presupposition <laughs> comes from some dude... Yet yeah, you keep talking... You're obviously very annoyed about this, Jimmy. I'm yeah? not, I'm calm. Your religious belief has been plucked out of some guy's arse. Going to you. Oh, I like, oh, oh, I'm, I like go, Jimmy. Nathan, Nathan, it goes further than that. Not only was it plucked out of his own ass, the, the book that he was cited in quotes him as being both accurate and ingenious, and the story should be spread. And being it's also from his ass. Yeah. <laughs> and it's awesome. also from the 17th century. Sorry, what was but that? This is the only citation oh, hold on, I've Anthony. got. Hold on, Anthony. Hold on, so Anthony. Got Anthony. Sorry, what was that, Alan? And the book's also from the 17th century. Unless and? you've got anything better, it's the only citation I've been able to find. It's from the 17th century. What do I, don't you, care. I don't understand. You got Sorry, better, hold, on. hold on, hold on, hold on. What's your point, it's Alan? What's your point, Alan? It's out of date, not relevant. So, what's it been superseded by? Tony, come on. Unless you've got anything better, this is the only thing I can find. It stands. Riley. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, have you got Riley, anything? No, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Have you got anything no. to challenge it? Have you? We've Anthony's been asking this question for quite some time, also. So, this has been presented to him from one of your side. Have you got anything better? I'll have a look. I'll do some homework if you wish. Isn't yeah. the dating of the source irrelevant if we allow the discussion of Eratosthenes to come into play, which was longer than? 300 years exactly. ago? Yeah, yeah, I think so, Travis. It depends on the technology used and the knowledge. Sticks. Things move sticks. on. He that's used that's, sticks. That's sticks and shadows. That's the thing about science. You, you're not afraid to be wrong. It's not science. No, sticks no, that would shadows. be isolating <laughs> independent variables and establishing cause and effect. Sticking sticks in the ground and presupposing that you're standing on a sphere, that definitely isn't science. 